Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how we can animate and create shapes within DaVinci Resolve 15's Fusion tab. So hopefully our end result should look something like this, where we can have a rotating cylinder, a box, or another geometric shape. So once you have your 3D animated clip, you'll be able to overlay that on top of regular video footage. So in order to create our 3D shape, we're going to need a clip on our video timeline that we can edit in the Fusion tab. So I found that one of the easiest ways to create this, uh, so that it's basically a blank clip that we can just add a shape to, is to add a text plus layer onto probably video track two, because you're going to want your shapes to show over the background video. So text plus is going to by default have a little title there. So we can very easily remove the base content by just taking the title text and erasing it. But it's not actually 100% necessary because in the Fusion tab, we can just disconnect the title node from the final output for this layer. So what I mean, if we go back over to the Fusion tab, which is the next one over, you'll have the template here. And in this case, that's referring to the text plus template. So if you don't want any title text whatsoever, we can actually just delete this and go back to having only media out as the only node here and then recreate everything from scratch. It's also possible if you want to add shapes such as boxes, rectangles, planes, or cylinders to a title sequence, we can merge the two of them together. For this video though, we're just gonna be focused on creating the cylinder. So I'm going to cut this out by hitting Control X or you can hit Backspace if you wanna delete it outright. So now that that's gone, we're going to need to create a series of nodes that will connect to our media output to create the final effect in the video clip. So while there are many nodes you can access in this tab by going up to right click, add tool, and then picking one out here, most of the simple tools such as adding shape are actually conveniently located on this hotbar up here. So we can add in a 3D shape node simply by clicking here, which adds a node to our node editor. And then we can click on the shape dropdown in order to select the shape we want. So before I had a cylinder, and if you want to see how these look, by the way, you can right click on the node that you want to view and choose view on left view or right view. So we can see a preview of the shape. So I had cylinder before, but we could change that to sphere. You can change that to cone or any of these other shapes. And then you have settings below to change the complexity of the geometric shape adding in more vertex points by increasing the number of subdivisions. So to stay consistent with what I was showing at the beginning of the video, let's do a cylinder. Now, if you only want to view one of these nodes at once, you can click over here to make it a single viewer. And we can increase the size of this viewer window by dragging down here. Of course, if you have a bigger monitor or multiple monitors, uh, splitting your windows up into bigger spaces would of course make it easier to work in this. But now I'm going to put it in dual viewer so that I can see the final media output and whatever I'm working on on the left. So if I want to connect the shape 3D to the media output, what we actually need before that is going to be a renderer node. So we can add a 3D renderer by clicking over here, 3D renderer. It's also of course available in right click, add tool, 3D, and then 3D renderer. And then this renderer needs to be connected to the media output. Now, if you want lighting, or if you want to combine multiple shapes into one 3D scene, then you're also going to need 3D merge nodes to combine multiple shapes or multiple scene objects, such as lights, into one node so that that can connect to the renderer and be outputted in the final output. So we're going to want to click on merge 3D over here. So this merge 3D node can take the shape 3D connection node and it'll have other things connecting in here, but ultimately we want to connect that to the renderer 3D node. And uh, now that you can see that there's a proper chain going from the shape 3D to the merge 3D to the renderer 3D and then to the media output, we can actually see what the uh, image that all of this node setup is creating in the final output. So this is what would actually show up in the video when we go back over to the edit tab and the timeline, we have a 3D cylinder showing there. It's hard to tell because there's no lighting and it's taking up the entire camera, but it is there. So now what we might want to do is move the cylinder further away from the camera or to decrease its size. I'll start by increasing the distance from the camera. So with the shape 3D selected in the inspector, we can go over to transform over here and we can increase, uh, or sorry, we can drop the Z offset 
decreasing it should move it away from the camera by default. So as we move that further away, we can see that the cylinder comes into view. Now it's completely white. You probably don't want a pure white cylinder and you probably want some lighting on that too. Uh, let's start by changing the color. So clicking on shape 3D, going over to the material tab, we can change the diffuse color of the cylinder. So that's gonna be the main base color of this 3D object. If we make it red, then the object is pretty much going to turn red for the most part. There's also specular lighting, but you couldn't see any of that until we actually enable some lights. So let's make it a darker red for now and add in a light. So lights also conveniently on the taskbar. So if we click on spotlight, it's going to add in a lighting node. So in the shape 3D view, we can see the light added in here, even though the spotlight isn't connected to anything yet. But now would be a good time to connect the spotlight to the merge 3D. So now there's a light inside of the scene looking to be at 0 .000 um, for XYZ coordinates, which means it's kind of already facing the cylinder. But if you want to rotate around the scene, you can hold alt down and then middle mouse click. And it, without holding alt down, holding middle mouse click allows you to pan. So it's pretty easy to move around the scene and get a better view on what's going on. But if we want to actually have the lighting do anything, then we need to click on the Renderer 3D node over here. So when you do that in the inspector, there'll be a section called lighting. We enable lighting here and then all of a sudden the cylinder turns black for the areas it doesn't have any uh, light on, but it does have that one little spotlight. So in this scene, there's only one light, which is a spotlight. There's no ambient light at all. So we can actually add in uh, something of the equivalent of a sunlight by right clicking, going to add tool, 3D light, and then choosing ambient light. And with this ambient light, we're going to want to connect that into merge 3D. So by doing that, uh, some of the colors are restored on the cylinder because there's now effectively a sun somewhere in the scene casting light on every object. Of course, depending on how bright we want that sunlight to be, we can change the intensity. So I can lower that down a bit. And if it makes sense to you, you can change the color of the skylight. So I could go here and make it something like a little bit of a blue, which of course is gonna mesh with the red to make it look more purple. But I'm going to leave it as white for right now. And now we probably wanna customize that spotlight. So I'm gonna click over on the spotlight. Perhaps to make the spot on the cylinder appear quite a bit larger, we want to actually move the spotlight further away so that the area it's casting onto is bigger. So if I drag this light further away from the object, the spot becomes bigger. It's the same effect you get when you have a flashlight and you were to pull that further away from the object or bring it closer. So if you bring it closer, it's going to be more intense, of course, but if you pull it further away, then it's going to cast its light on more area. So now you can actually see some of the specular lighting of that 3D object. So I'm going to click on the shape 3D. And now if we want this to show up differently, we can go down to the specular tab, open that up and change the specular color. So if I change that to something that's more of like a a uh, very grayish mild red that may look a little bit more realistic than having just a random white light there. So let's tone down that lighting to a softer red gray. So that's the very basics of how you would light up an object in a scene. So let's talk about how you would animate its rotation. So clicking on shape 3D again, we can go up to the transform tab over here and the inspector, of course. And what you'll notice is that there are keyframes here. So just like Pretty much everything else in Resolve, you can animate it by setting keyframes. So first off, I'm going to set a permanent X rotation and Z rotation so that the cylinder is tilted towards the camera in a way that we can see the top. So I'm going to increase the X rotation a bit here. Actually, we don't necessarily even need the Z rotation, but you can play around with that if you want to get it to look at a different angle. And you'll notice also that the cylinder here on the shape 3D view doesn't actually have a bottom. By default, that's the case. So if you want to add in the caps or the bases, um, then you can go to the controls tab and then you can check bottom and top to add those back in. Up to you if you want those inside of your cylinder. And of course there's other settings here you can play around with, just uh, simple math stuff. So if you want like a less complicated cylinder, you could drop the number of subdivisions, which will make it a more blocky shape, basically reducing the geometric complexity of the shape. Of course, you can modify the height if you want it to be more like a tin can. 
and you can increase the radius if you want it to become a very very fat cylinder. Of course any of those settings you can also animate with keyframes but let's do it with rotation here. So what I'm going to do first is go to frame zero of this clip and I'm going to set a keyframe for the Y rotation. I do that by clicking on the diamond and then in order to make that rotate over time I have to choose a new place for the ending rotation, another keyframe and generally speaking I think that's going to be the last frame in this video clip and I can set a new keyframe by just adding in a value now. Um, once you've set one keyframe, if you change the value on any other frame during the video clip, it automatically creates a keyframe and you know that because this diamond will turn from gray to red. So I'm going to type in 720 here, which is going to mean two full rotations. One rotation is 360 degrees, of course. So now what's going to happen is from frame 0 to 149, it's going to rotate twice on the Y axis. So you can see here, if I play it back, it is going to be rotating. So if I hit play here, you'll be able to see the cylinder rotating around. Note that the spotlight stays in place. It's still pointed at the cylinder, but we're looking at the cylinder from different angles because it's a 3D object that's rotating around. Now the reason why it's a good idea to have two views open instead of one is that we can see the object in its 3D space rotating before anything renders, but we can also see the final video output. So whatever we have in media out one is what's going to be added back onto the edit timeline that we'll show in our final video, and that's what really counts in DaVinci Resolve. So once we're done here, we can go ahead and hit stop. We can go back onto the video timeline. So we have our cylinder here rotating around by itself. You may get some choppiness or you may see it disappear a little bit in the editing timeline, but when you actually export, it should be fine. Of course, whenever you export your video, do double check that everything came out fine. But with this simple object, we just have it rotating in space with its own light. But yeah, with this basic fusion setup, we have a 3D cylinder rotating around in place. And now when we're ready, we can combine that with other clips in our overall video project. So I'll just drop in this clip here. So what's great about this is that you're able to create some 3D scenes that you can overlay with your overall video inside of DaVinci Resolve without using any external programs. Now one good application you can use for these kind of shape effects is actually to create titles. So if we take a look at the fusion titles that exist in the effects library, all of these titles were created using the fusion tab. And you know that because they have this little fusion logo here. So for instance, I could show you the 3D title in a box. So you can see here that this title, and I'll just kind of play it back here. But this title is using not just text characters, but it's actually using a rotating uh, rectangular box of short. This title is not just using text, but it's also using a rotating 3D box that's going around the title. And if we click on this title and we go over to the Fusion tab, we can actually double click on this grouping here. So if we take a look at the group for that 3D title that exists out of the box, You'll notice here that they've got a lot of 3D shapes being set up here to create that uh, box. I imagine that what is actually going on here is that that's four separate cubes that are layered over each other to create a hollowed out rectangle effect. And it merges all together. Note the main text over here. So you can use the Fusion tab in order to create text titles in combination with these shapes. And you've got lights playing on the scene, creating effects such as it being brighter in the middle, more so than the sides. And all of that ties together in the final video output. So hopefully this looks really similar to what we've been doing in this video. I'm trying to show you guys what's possible within the Fusion tab of DaVinci Resolve. So hopefully everything's coming together. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future DaVinci Resolve videos.